Hey folks, it's Nash Walk Steve here. Uh, this project we have going on this week is making a ramp for jet skis. This is one of the completed ones I made and I'm gonna make the second one and show you how I did it. Give you kind of a look at this thing. It's meant to just be able to crank your jet ski up onto land out from the lake. So it has a safe place to stay. It's got a winch on it that's removable and then also an anchor point just to tie it up to once you've got it all the way up where you want it. Here's kind of what it looks like. Simple frame using PVC as slides and then the removable winch there too. It can be used for multiple ramps. I'll show you how we made this and start from scratch on the second one. So we ended up picking up a couple jet skis for a really good price recently. Uh, we've got one there and then another one back over here that's still on the beach. Um, and if you're anything like me, I didn't want to spend thousands of dollars on a jet ski lift for these jet skis that we didn't pay a whole lot for. So I was looking for a way to get them up out of the water um, beached or somehow safe on shore without having to use a, a lift. So I came across this idea that I, I saw some different designs and decided to make my own um, for a ramp for the jet ski. This is Here it is completed with the jet ski on it. I showed you it up in the driveway before, before it had a couple modifications. I'm gonna point out some of the features of this thing just so you can kind of see how it works. So like I'm, I was designing this so I could only use one winch instead of two. So I'm gonna have two ramps and I don't wanna have, to have two winches sitting out here in the elements. So I made this. It can just lift right up and off here. It just slides on those bolts and these pieces of um, two by six there. And then I put that a bolt or a whole uh, eye screw in there to hold a chain, which holds onto the jet ski there. Um, my initial design did not have this support. I kind of forgot to put that in, and it did not have these gusset plates. When the first time I cranked this up, this board here ended up tipping that way. Um, these screws pulled the right out the bottom. So I added this gusset to one on this side and one on the other side keep this 2x6 uh, sturdy here so it's just doing all the work when uh, it's lifting this jet ski out of the water. You can see it's a pretty good angle here so it's lifting a lot of weight when you have that thing cranking up here. So and you can see how I stopped the, the pipes and the support here eight feet from the back side. Uh, this front two feet there's no reason to have the pipes there it's not really usable space anyway so that's what it looks like. Cranks it up nice you just put the winch back on it and release the chain and it slides right back into the water. Nice and easy. So here are the materials that I use for this project. Uh, first of all, I have two two by six, 10 foot long pieces of green treated lumber. I've got five two by fours green treated. I think I only need four, but I've got one as a spare. I kind of use some extra toward the end for bracing. And then an eight foot four by four green treated post. A bunch of uh, three inch decking screws there. And then this is a trailer winch, uh, a boat winch. I'm gonna use one for both of the um, water jet ski ramps that I'm making. And then I've got a heavy duty, like a four inch eye screw there that we'll use as a anchor point to hold the jet ski up once it's cranked up onto the ramp. And then two 10 foot long pieces of inch and a half PVC that will be serving as the slides for this thing. So we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, if you've never used a speed square, Here's a quick guide on how to do it. So I need to cut this end here at a 15 degree angle because the front of this jet ski ramp is gonna have a 15 degree angle on the post. So what you do here with this is, you look at these numbers here. These are the degrees as you lift up this edge here, you pivot on the point here that says pivot. I'm gonna raise this up so there's five degrees, 10 degrees, 15 degrees. So now this, what I need right here, is 15 degrees. I'll go ahead and strike that there and then I'll cut both of these to that same angle. So in order to get the correct placement of the 2x4 that's going to stand out from this 2x6 and hold the PVC pipe, I need to measure down from the top on the inside of the board that it's going to be out the, the rail. Measure down one inch and mark that all the way along the eight feet here. The board is 10 feet, but the rail is only going to be on the last eight feet. So I have, I have it laying here. The inside of each board is up and then I'll mark an inch down from this side here, mark an inch down from this side here, and then I can place that two by four along there that will be the support. Okay, I got those marked out and I set the two by four on end. It's going to go there. You can see my mark. You can see the two by four sitting there. Right now there's it's clamped in place. I'm going to go ahead from underneath. I just started a screw and I'm gonna measure in a little bit and screw these in place. So both of them will be fixed there and then we'll move on from that point. 
So here I've got the whole thing flipped upside down. I'm gonna put these supports in here. So what I did here, I have these two by fours that I actually ripped a half inch off of. So now they're three inches instead of three and a half. What I didn't want here is for all the weight to bear on just a few of these that are sticking out if they protruded past this rail. So I cut them so they're either flush or just below. I want the weight to be on this two by six rail, not these little uh, chopped up two by fours. So I made them each, eight, each exactly 18 inches wide. Um, and then I just fit them in here. I put a bar clamp across this one. I'll start on this end. Put a couple screws in each end of these things and put it at the quarter point, halfway point, three quarter point, and then up here at the eight foot point where those boards end. So go ahead and screw these down into place. Okay, here's the unit. I flipped it back over so it's upright. You can see now we've got everything assembled to put the pipe in here. It'll sit right in this spot here all the way along. It's supported well with these uh, three inch ribs everywhere. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is put the headboard in here. So I lied about my materials. I actually used a little bit of two by eight as well, not just two by six. So this one what I did is I measured it to the distance across from here to here. And then I went ahead and I ripped a 15 degree angle on that. So it will fit nicely in here. So we just put it here, tilt it into place like that. And then I can screw it in. Once I have that screwed in place, I'm also gonna add this two by four and that two by four over here to the sides, just to provide some um, stiffness to this board here when it's pulling all that weight of the jet ski up. So I'll screw it in here on the end and screw it back into this one. So it's gonna, um, those screws are really gonna give this some strength when you're pulling on it hard from the top. So that's the next step, we'll go ahead and do that. All right, I've got that angled board up there. I got my gusset supports on the side, screwed in heavily into that end piece. And next step was to cut this four by four treated post. I cut it to 30 inches and then I cut the bottom at a 15 degree angle. Kind of see it there a little bit. So it would just sit nicely up against here when I get it seated. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clamp that. And then I also have some big eight inch carriage bolts that were left over from a deck project. I'm gonna use those to uh, hold this thing in place. So for now, I'll clamp it right there. I will put a couple of three inch screws in to hold it while I drill out the big holes for the um, carriage bolts there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done. As you can see there, I got those carriage bolts installed. Support this thing. A little bit of extra thread there, but that's all I had. Next up is to put the eye screw in here. This is gonna go, I went up 15 inches to this point right here. Uh, I'm gonna put it in there. This is used just for uh, putting a chain on here to hold the jet ski up or something like that. The winch will be up above it, but just to hold it stationary, this is gonna be in this point. So what I do here is I take a pretty good size drill bit, like a three eighths or so, drill that through, then take this thing and thread it in. So I'm gonna do that. And then this is kind of also serving as the guide for where our diagonal support is gonna go. It's gonna go from underneath here, underneath the eye screw, down over to this board here to give this um, four by four a lot of resistance to bend there. We'll do that now. All right, that eye screw is installed there. Next thing to do is to put this diagonal brace in here. So I found the easiest way to do this is start with your angle on this end. Um, I just use trial and error to figure out that this one, um, about a 20 degree angle on that end, seems to match up well with where I want this to sit. I want it to be just below that eye screw there, so about right there. Um, my last one ended up being 15 degrees, so just kind of some differences in how the boards line up, but uh, trial and error gets you that one. And then with this one, all you do is take your pencil, once you like the placement of that board there, and just mark it from the back with a line like that. And go ahead and cut it. We'll do that now and then install this with three inch screws. All right, my diagonal is installed, screwed in three screws back there, and then toe screwed in on either side and the top up here, making that four by four nice and rigid. Next step is to put the uh, PVC pipes on so they're fully supported here. Um, I cut these to length and lay, laid it in place. The way I attach these is I start by drilling a pretty good sized hole on the top of the pipe. I think it's one, one size over my 3 8 bit, whatever will fit in my drill, the biggest one that'll fit. And then that the purpose of that is so what I'm putting the screw in with will fit through the hole and can, I can attach a screw to the back. So that goes all the way in there 
with the drill on it and we'll attach a screw into the bottom. I'm using two inch screws because I'm going all the way down into this support. I'll put one screw in at every rib. They really are just there to keep that PVC in place because this is getting all this is giving all the support, this two by four on either side. Um, but that's what we're gonna go ahead and do. We'll screw in, let's see, one, two, three, four, five on each side and put in five screws and then we'll move on from there. All right, folks, here it is uh, in its complete form. You can see I finished up the pipes there. Those five holes on each side, five screws on each side. And then I just went and found some chain that I had laying around, took an S hook there and bent it to work for, that, for the end that will hook on the jet ski and then just put a, um, I don't know what you call that, adjustable uh, link there to make this thing work. So this will hold the jet ski in place when it's resting. And there's the time it'll be on the winch. Um, so that's the whole thing. I'm gonna drag it down to the backyard now and see if we can pull a jet ski up on it. So there is the jet ski ramp we just built. It worked great. Just cranked the jet ski back up to it for the night. Use my slide on, slide off winch there. Just came off of that one. Both these are identical and work pretty well. If you have a flat area, it'd be even easier to crank up than it was for me. And it's not too difficult doing it up this hill like this. So hope this helps you. Hope it uh, works out for you as a good idea of a way to store your jet ski when you're not using it, keeping it high and dry. Thanks.